Okay, video number 10. We're still um, dealing with, uh, you know, getting a pretty nice uh, fuel fuel map here, and this is just something that I created. Um, and this may look, you know, uh, uh, a lot different than, than what you guys came up with, you know, just doing these cell-by-cell -cell values and whatnot, but um, what should be pretty much the same is you guys should hit some sort of of relative peak curve, okay, and then it should drop. Um, your, your actual, you know, like raw uh, fuel value should drop with RPM after a certain point, okay, and then all of this stuff up here, basically, uh, let's see, all all of this stuff, like everything can boost everything from this, from this point here, um, up. Basically, once you hit atmospheric pressure here. And I've got just very small differences from here um, to here. But everything from here up is all the same. And it's all changed and altered um, with uh, this this map here, your, your uh, boost fuel comp table. And something to, to watch out for whenever you guys are doing the cell-by-cell -cell stuff, um, if, if you find an area where, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really weird... Uh, rich or really weird lean. Um, make sure that the surrounding values, like let, let's just say for whatever reason, um, this point right here is just you know rich for whatever reason, and uh, you know this point down here uh, is also a little rich, but this point right here is lean. Okay, so what what you have to start looking at after you've got you know like a decent looking fuel map where the the, the curvature is right the torque curve is right and everything looks it, it, it's making sense okay we need to start looking at is sections of the fuel graph okay so you're looking at this point you're not looking at this point you're looking at this area okay so let's say you know this point is a little rich this point's a little rich this point's a little rich this point's a little lean Okay, so what you need to start looking at is the area around that whole section. Okay, so you start doing stuff like this, and you start pulling these uh, x-axis lines, you know, closer together. Okay, and everything becomes uh, the, the the ECU isn't having to do these. Um, large calculations there, there's there's not a lot of area in between these axes now so it's not uh, it, it, it's not a big jump everything is pretty close and the better your fuel map most of the time if you have you know your injector set up right and uh, you know everything is pretty solid mechanically you usually end up with numbers that are pretty close um, you know they might be closer than this um, you know, again, this is just a map that I made up. Um, but you, you start getting this kind of stuff where, uh, you know, you're, you're really fine-tuning this stuff. And again, keep in mind that everything that we're doing right now, this is all with O2 feedback off. It's been off through every single video, okay? What we're trying to do is establish a really good base fuel map and, um, you know, uh, boost comp map and all of this stuff. This is all with O2 feedback off, all of it. And once you get this map, you know, let's just for for time's sake, let's assume that this ends up tuning out really nice. Okay, um, it, it, it it tunes out pretty good, um, given just about any point on this graph. Uh, you're you know running at 13.5 or 14 or something like that something pretty acceptable for no o2 feedback don't worry about getting it dead on at lambda you know trying to make every single cell 14.7 or something like that don't don't waste your time doing that because that's what o2 feedback control is for for those little you know 0 0.5 0 0.8 afr changes that are that are going to be different from day to day to day to day it's just it, it's part of it let the o2 feedback control get super picky about this stuff but get this map to where you know you're cruising at 14 o's you know something in that area you know as you transition into boost you know you're looking at 13s and then you know um you know, uh, let's like 12 eighths, 
you know, somewhere in there, 12 O's here, 11 8's here, and then, you know, 11 5's and 11 3's on up, something like that. Um, get it to where, with O2 feedback off, it's, 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 it's close. Um, it's, it's, you know, e exceptional. It's, it's working really well. So, let's say we've got our fuel map done. E everybody's happy. Start's good. Idle's good. Um, you know, runs, runs really well with no O2 feedback. So now what we're going to do <coughs> is um, the last thing to really start checking before we turn O2 feedback control on, kind of the last piece of the puzzle here, is we're going to go into um, Excel. Now, this is um, basically, um, you know, like quick throttle changes, okay? Um, what I've found to be a very, very good starting point in work on um, almost every single setup, this Excel versus throttle model, uh, uh, Excel versus throttle modifier, this graph right here. Um, for sim, uh, simplicity's sake, what we're going to do is we're going to just do um, that. Okay, so for uh, it starts at 100, it goes to 0, it starts at 0, it goes to 100, okay? So this is a very linear calculation, it's very proportional, it's very easy numbers, okay? Um, this graph right here, um, think of it, um, what this stands for is Delta TPS Excel, okay? This is Excel Delta Throttle Position versus um, Delta throttle percent Excel percent. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to explain basically it's like a delta versus delta um, uh, proportional setting. Um, for simplicity's sake let's just say that the higher or lower this should slope you know a moderate from left to right because you never really get past 25. Um, so, so don't worry about all this out here. Just make it safe to say that um, the higher number that you go, the smaller throttle body you have, the less fuel you need with large changes. The lower that you go, the more fuel it's going to dump. Like so, let's say you have like a 102 millimeter throttle body, it's it's going to be way further down here, okay? And then um, these two graphs, okay, the Excel versus engine RPM. This is kind of a um, what's 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 a good way to put this? How much uh, how much TPS Excel it's going to factor into at each RPM value? Okay, so these lower RPMs are probably usually need more TPS Excel factor because there's a lot of variance in 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 the throttle change. Okay, now out here. Where you know everybody's ripping on it past four grand, seven grand, you're not playing with the throttle a lot out there. You're basically just full throttle. So there doesn't need to be a lot of you know Excel factor. Um, you can change it a lot, and it's not going to vary it a lot. Okay. So I'll let you guys play with these values because there's not really a generic setup per se. I don't want to throw something at you guys that you're going to take and be like, whoa, he did it this way, so this should be right. It's not really how it works. It's different for Nissans, different for Supras, um, different for V8s. Just remember that it should it should be high on the left, very low on the right, and pretty much be the same value out here in higher RPMs. All of this in here you can play with. And then the Accelerator's coolant temp. Um, you can actually use this as kind of a secondary map to this, okay? This you can actually increase how much fuel. Uh, you're, you're, you're kind of tricking it. You're giving it an additional fuel percentage on top of this, okay? So you're you're saying even at 80 percent, or I'm sorry, um, 80 degrees Celsius, 90 degrees Celsius, 180 degrees, there's still an Excel warm-up enrichment of 10 percent. So it's like an additional. Um, multiplier that you're going to stack on top of a couple because if, if if you can't get these right, let's say you you know you, you slam the throttle and it's still really lean, you you get this huge lean spike, and you know it's not in th any of these values, 
these values are good. Your, your fuel map's good. As long as you don't do any major throttle changes, all these AFR values are right. Like all, all of these, all these um, base fuel uh, values are, are right and everything works good. But when you go to do quick um, uh, throttle excels and stuff like that, you'll notice you get a, a, a lean spike or a rich spike. That's where this stuff comes into play. And that's the only time it comes into play. It has, if you can drive around and do real slow fuel changes um, or real slow throttle changes and all, and you're happy with all your AFRs, you do not change any of this. That's all in these Excel Excel tables here. Um, the 80% sensitivity is a, actually a pretty good number. Um, uh, the trigger is whenever you pass a certain increase, it, it's like an increase versus time percent. So if you pass this, what would be this 1.2 percent? Um, that's when it starts um, taking all of these into account. Okay. So if if you if you raise this value, you have to give it more throttle um, before, like more more throttle quicker before these things start coming into play. Okay. The Excel limit is. The basically the cap of how much fuel these can add on top of your fuel map. Okay, um, the pump sustain is the time. Basically, it's in percent, but think of it in seconds. Okay, very small seconds, um, um, you know, f uh, fractions of a second. That it keeps these maps um, adding fuel into uh, quick Excel changes. Um, I'm running out of time. I'll finish this and a couple other things in the next video.